and welcome. So today I want to talk about the magic wand. Believe it or not, I get asked about this quite a bit. What kind of wand do you use? Where did you get it? And uh, magicians don't ask me about this. Um, lay people do. They're curious. They're curious about the wand. They're curious about where it comes from. And in my opinion, it's best to have a good answer. Uh, they expect there to be some sort of esoteric quality about a magician's wand. And there actually is. Now, I'm, I, let me just say this at the outfront. I'm one of those magicians that, that believes in magic. And I'm, by, by magic, I mean real magic, the real thing. Uh, most magicians, in my opinion, in my opinion, most magicians do not. Uh, most magicians, uh, in fact, many magicians uh, campaign against such things. I believe in real magic, and and uh, I th I think that I bring that belief to the table, and it informs everything that I do. So I want to talk a little bit about the wand, where it comes from, and how you use it in the context of a performing art. Now this this video is not intended to instruct on how to use a wand in the context of ritual. That's that's another another category altogether. But I, I think that when you introduce a wand into your work, there should be some, some intentionality about it. You should understand the wood of the wand. You should understand why you're using it, what its purpose is. And, uh, and I, I think that brings something into your magic that's, that's important. It informs what you do. There's a, there's a great mentalist who told me that... I should have a silent script running in the back of my mind for every performance that I do. And what he meant by silent script was what am I trying to, what effect am I trying to communicate to my audience? It could be divination, or it could be thought reading, or it could be clairvoyance, but there is some sort of effect that I want to convey, and that effect should be in the back of my mind. Otherwise, even if you don't explicitly say it, and you should not explicitly say it, because actions speak louder than words, and a picture is worth a thousand words, so what you're trying to do as a performance artist is create the picture in the minds of your audience of something supernatural taking place. But if you don't know what that supernatural event is, the audience sure isn't. Well, the same thing applies to the magic wand. Uh, what is your intention? What is your purpose? What is your silent script when you hold the wand? So I'd like to go over a few things today about the wand. First of all, the wand. Now this, um, I'm going to talk about how to make a wand. This is a wooden dowel that I purchased from either Michael's or Home Depot or, or one of those places. You can pick this up for $2, $3, something like that. It's inexpensive. Bring it back, cut it, shape it. Uh, it's one of the things I'm going to recommend in, in your first wand, in making wands. Um, so this is pine. Now, the way that you make a wand, <coughs> and really most of your wands should have this property. Many of these do not. This one does. But the way that you want to make a wand, you want to make it very personal for you. So that you know when you perform that that wand belongs to you and no one else. There's a sense of, this is my tool about it, this belongs to me. So what you want to do is take, take the wooden dowel, push it into the, to the crux of your arm this way, and let your forefinger rest on the wand, and then just mark it right there at that point. Now that gives it a length that is unique to your body. Now you can see that this particular wand is cut to that exact length, and this particular wand is cut to that exact length as well. So that that speaks to the length of the wand. Now this this is pine, and uh, pine has a particular quality. It, it it speaks about clarity. It speaks to us about purification. And by the way, wands are typically associated with the element of fire. Uh, not every wand. Some wands have other qualities and speak to other elements, but typically uh, the wand is associated with the element of fire. Uh, fire is passion. Fire is energy. 
and that's something that you want to bring to your show. So when you pick up a wand, you're picking up fire and uh, you're associating all of those qualities with your performance. Fire, energy, passion. It's a good thing to hold a wand and understand that that's, those are the properties and energies that you're channeling when you hold the wand. So this is a pine wand. Pine is typically associated with clarity or purification. These are intentions that you, that you bring into the use of your wand. This wand was made from this dowel. That's a plain pine dowel. What I did was I cut it to size, which that's the size right there. So I cut it to size, I rounded the ends, and then I applied a little bit of stain. Very simple, very inexpensive. You don't have to spend a lot of money, and guess what? Even the very best wands are not a lot of money. I'm going to go through that in just a second. So, <clears throat> wands are typically associated with fire. Sometimes you have earth energies. Sometimes you have other energies uh, in the wands, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. The other thing, you're probably thinking at this point, you know what? I'm a magician. I I'm a performer. I, have I don't want anything to do with the with the real uh, magic, I don't want, I don't want to think about it. Here here's why I'd like to encourage you to give it some thought. Number one, when you study and you understand the principles of of wood, the principles, the magical principles that go into what you're doing, it adds a sense of uh, authenticity. I can't describe exactly how that happens. It's it's like when when I was in sales, I I did sales for a number of years. And a great sales manager used to tell me, when you speak to a customer on the phone, smile, have a mirror on your desk, look at yourself and make sure you're smiling, right? Because a smile can be heard. Now that sounds ridiculous. A smile can be heard, but it can be. And it makes all the difference in the world when you're trying to establish rapport with somebody on the other end of a telephone. Well, the same thing is true here. When you're performing and you have a sense, oh, this is an ash wand. Ash speaks to me of strength, of purpose, and wisdom. So you carry that with you into your performance uh, and, and you know that wands come from, uh, are associated with the element of fire, you have that passion, you have that energy. <coughs> it informs what you do as a performer. Again, going back to the silent script, it's not something you ever want to say to your audience. You don't want to say, oh, wands are associated with fire, oh, ash is associated with strength of purpose and wisdom. You don't want to say that. But... The, the fact that you've internalized it comes out in, in, in ways that can't be measured in your performances. So, you know, it, it, even if you're not a magician in the real sense of the word, I would encourage you to study the principles so that it informs your performance. It gives your performance a, an air of authenticity that you wouldn't otherwise have. So, wands are associated with fire. Uh, uh, it adds a sense of authenticity to your show. It informs your performance. Making a wand, again, the basics, get yourself a dowel, cut it to size, put a little stain on it. You know what else you can do? Uh, this particular wand is a willow, and uh, I, I love the shape of that. You know, it's not, by the way, let, let me digress for just a second. There are two purposes for a wand. One you're performing magic and you want... Here, here's the thing about performance magic. Audiences need to believe that the magic comes from somewhere. It might come from you as a person. It might come from your tools or instruments. Um, the, for, for centuries, the magic wand has been associated with the magician. And there is some belief in our collective unconscious that, that magical energies are challenged, challenged through the wand. So, so when you perform magic and, and you, you wave your wand, especially now in, in the post Harry Potter age, uh, people are going to think that. So, uh, so there are two, two purposes for the wand for magical purposes. And by magic here, I mean performance art. One is to have that association, to have your audience thinking, oh, uh, magical energies are being channeled through the wand. The other is misdirection. Um, this wand and this one and this one 
are um, are straight and uh, they're not curved and they're they're fairly well balanced as you can see they're fairly well balanced um, which is what you want if you're going to use the wand for misdirection in a cups and balls routine for example you're vanishing balls and the wand is very important to that in fact if you're going to vanish anything the wand can be very important to that I'm not going to go into the reasons why uh, that's that's a magical instruction that that I don't really want to do here but but you need a wand that is that is balanced that feels good in your fingers that you can turn fairly easily you need a wand like that for purposes of misdirection if you're going to use the wand as as a uh, to unconsciously communicate to your audience that, that this is a magical property that the effects that they're seeing are taking place because of the the channeling of magical energies through the wand then it doesn't matter what the shape of the wand is in fact the more odd or peculiar the shape the more well turned the shape uh, the more uh, magical it will appear and uh, and the more convincing it will be to your audience so I'd, I'd encourage you to think about the think about your purpose always think about your purpose first so let's talk a little bit about the the, the properties of, of various woods and, and this is the other thing now now know what your intention is up front why do you want to use a magic wand in the first place by the way as a mentalist I don't use a magic wand I don't because in mentalism the, 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 the magical uh, uh, effect, if you will, comes from the mind. And so uh, the projecting that out into a magic wand doesn't make sense. It comes from the mind. So there's no magic wand in, in, in my performances as a mentalism. Uh, so let's talk about the principles of wood for, for a moment here. This first one up here, this is ash. And as I mentioned earlier, ash is associated with strength of purpose and wisdom. Uh, I love that. It's a, it's a dark wand. It's a, it's a beautiful wand. It's well balanced. It's light. Uh, lovely piece. These two are both willow. Willow is, is associated with creativity. And I like that too. By the way, I have, you probably can't see this, but I have uh, taken a wood burner and I have burned my name and... Um, and uh, you can burn all sorts of emblems into a wand. You can burn uh, seagulls into a wand, uh, symbols. Uh, but they should be highly meaningful for you. So it's another way to personalize your wand, uh, to put your name in it, to put a few symbols on it. Uh, I've also seen wands that have um, add the energy of a gemstone or a crystal. And that, uh, that makes some sense for some people. I don't particularly like it, but I've seen them. Usually at the end of the wand, for example, here, they will attach uh, some sort of a gemstone or crystal to add to the energetic properties of the wand. It's okay if you want to do that. This is another willow that is um, a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. Uh, I like that one too. This one here is mahogany. Mahogany... Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, wands are typically associated with the element of fire, but mahogany is particularly associated with, with the earth as well. So you have those two elements working together in this one wand, earth and fire. Um, and the purpose of mahogany is really to enhance your intuition. So if, you, if you're trying to communicate to your audience that what you're doing is based on, on intuition, uh, it's not a bad wand for enhancing that and for enhancing that presentation. Uh, these these two back here are pine. Uh, pine is typically associated with clarity of thought or purification. Uh, again, pine is inexpensive, readily available, and, uh, and I like it. So uh, this one is pine. This one also is pine. You notice that it has brass tips. Uh, it's a very that that. The magic wand, I think, in the collective unconscious of, of the United States of America, typically you see it uh, black with white tips. I've never actually used a wand like that. Uh, there are lots of gimmicked wands are made that way, and if you want to use that, that's fine. I really like natural wood and, and stained wood, so that's what I've gravitated to my whole life. I, this was one of my first wands. I think this wand is at least 40 years old, maybe more, um, but that was one of my first. This one here, 
Now this one is very heavy, first of all, so it's not the best wand in my opinion for, for performance magic if you're going to use it as part of the misdirection uh, because it's heavy. But what's interesting about this wand is that it, it combines three different woods and it gives it that, that quality of, of shading. So as far as a piece of art, this thing is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it has palm, it has cherry, and it has redwood. Now the palm is associated with masculine energy. Let me speak to a second about that. When I talk about masculine or feminine, I'm not referring to a gender. I'm referring instead to an energy. And so when I say this wand has masculine energy, uh, I'm saying that it is uh, associated with victory, it's associated with competition, uh, that sort of thing, masculine energy. So uh, the cherry in the wand is associated with feminine energy. So again, in some wands you have earth and fire, in some wands you have masculine and feminine coming together, and that uh, the femininity of the wand speaks to us of harmonious relationships and harmony. Uh, again, I'm not referring to a gender, I'm referring to an energy. Uh, and then you have the redwood, the redwood in the wand. And uh, the redwood is associated with fire as an element. And uh, it's one of the largest trees. It's one of the largest trees. So, so and, and, and this is going to sound silly on the surface, but it, but it makes perfect sense. Since it is one of the largest trees, it has the, the spiritual association of connecting heaven and earth. Uh, very significant from, a, from an esoteric point of view. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, well, um, earth is down here and heaven is up, that makes absolutely no sense. Uh, but there are uh, principles, for lack of a better word. I know that, that the, the other realm is all around, that's not necessarily up there, I, I know that. But, uh, but that association as above, so below. That is that association carries over. So you get uh, when you when you see birds, for example, in in uh, in in many uh, legends, uh, birds carry spirits to the other side, and and so um, you you get that association because of the the long-standing association of the sky with the heavenly realm. And uh, in, in fact, uh, this today is Good Friday. And, uh, and during, during the Easter event, uh, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He, he appeared to his disciples. And at one point, he rose. That is, he ascended into heaven. They stood there and they watched him go up. And that's called the ascension. And so even in, in Christian circles, you have that association of sky with heaven, even though we know that, that, uh, that the heavens are all around us. Um, so, so the, the redwood, though, is particularly associated with that. So it, it gives the wand that, that quality of connecting heaven and earth, or connecting the realms, the, 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 the seen realm and the unseen realm, if you will. So uh, lots of energies coming into this wand. And that's the other thing I haven't spoken of too much. Once you start studying the, the, the qualities of wood, and uh, the purposes of wood and the intentions and so on. Once you start studying that, uh, it, it, it does begin to influence everything you do and, and you become a little more aware of the energy that's in things. Uh, there, there are particular energies in crystals, there are particular energies in wood. And so the, uh, the, the type of wand you select and the type of wood you select uh, once you've studied that a little bit, you, you pick up a wand and you feel, you feel differently. When I pick up this one, which is mahogany, I feel much differently than when I pick up this one, which is pine, or this one, which is willow. Uh, so, there, so there's different feelings that, that you begin to have when you touch and handle a wand. Uh, and that also informs your performance. Again, it's not my purpose to to uh, lead you down the, the path into, into the magical realm. It's not my purpose at all. Uh, but when you get a little bit of understanding, it does inform your performance. And I think it makes the performance better. So uh, to be intentional about everything that you're doing, 
to stop and think, okay, what, what shape of wand do I want to use and why do I want to go with that particular shape? Uh, what, what type of wood do I want my wand to be made of and what are the properties of that wood? Uh, what length of wand uh, do I want to work with? All of those questions bring to bear an intention on your performance. It will inform your performance. It will enhance your performance. It just makes the show a little bit better. You know, when I used to compete as a, as a swimmer, and uh, the difference between a first place win and a last place win was sometimes less than a second. Uh, and let me tell you something, when you're performing, the difference between, wow, that was stunning and eh, that was okay, is less than a second, you know? And, and it really, it's all those little things that go into your performance, that go into your preparation, that can really put it over the top. So folks, um, this was my little two cents on the magic wand. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, ask me down below and please subscribe. Talk to me, subscribe. I want to interact with you. Uh, thank you so much for watching.